Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use a bunch of curved data sources, just a bunch of different directions with one object position event. So let's get started. Okay, so first we need an interval trigger. It's going to power everything. Then we need an object position event. Oops. Object position event. And then we're going to use a curved data source to move it forward. So that's going to be the x axis. And we're going to move 400 meters. And there's just a number that I'm using. It doesn't matter how much. It just needs to, you need to know how far you need to go and you need to figure out the speed. So I'm going to put this at 1500. Okay, I'm going to turn these off because we're going to trigger them with state event. Okay, so the x position is going to be the curved data source. The event target is going to be the car. That's all we need. Okay, the impulse trigger, we're going to set that to be one tick every frame. We're going to go to the object position event. Now we need a state event to power this. So we're going to grab a state event. I'm going to set this to on. And it's going to turn on these three items. Okay, so now we're going to use another interval trigger. We're going to let this simulate you hitting an area trigger or whatever. We're going to make it be one tick and only one tick and go to the start to start everything. So that would be the on event. So there, we click that and it makes the car go straight. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to curve it. But you want to curve more than different directions, more than one direction. You want to curve a bunch of different directions. So we're going to use a variable for that. So grab a variable data source. We're going to hook it to the yaw of the car. So it'll be the turning of the car. Okay, so now for what for this, what we're going to use is another interval trigger. And we're going to use a couple of delay events. I mean, uh, delay filters. I always call everything an event. Okay, delay filter. Then we need a set value event. We need a curved data source. And we need two state events. One state event here, one state event here. Okay, and we need another delay up here. Okay, move this up to here. All right, now, how this works is, I'm gonna set the impulse to be one tick every frame, and it's gonna go to the set value event. The set value event is gonna use the value of the curved data source and it's going to go to the variable that we're using for yaw. Okay, now this we want to set this to be ease in out. I'm going to make this be a 90 degree turn. And it's going to take 45 ticks to turn. Okay, now we want to turn this off. Enabled, off. Turn off the impulse trigger. And let's use this state event set it to on and the event targets are going to be the impulse trigger and the curved data source then our event filter is going to go to the delayed impulse which is going to be 45 ticks because we used 45 ticks in the curved data source so we're going to delay for 45 ticks and then we're going to go to the off state event which is going to turn everything off the reason you want to turn everything off is because it's going to still constantly set it to the top number, the end number on this curved data source. And if you're going to use another curved data source, it won't change. So you want to turn everything off. Now this delay is going to go to the on event. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go 10, we're going to wait 10 ticks because it looks like the cars, we're going to make the car turn right, right here at this corner. And so 10 ticks is as far as I'm going to let it go forward before it turns right. Now, we start here moving forward, then we're going to go with our 
impulse over to the delayed event, which then is going to wait 10 ticks and then turn on the turn, which is going to turn it to 90 degrees. And this goes from 0 to 90. So what we're going to do is we're going to group this together. All right, and now let's test it out. So it drives down and turns to the right, 90 degrees. Okay, so now what you can do is copy this, come from your off event over to your delayed impulse, and I'm going to go, what you have to remember is your end number from here has to be your start number now. So I'm going to start at 90 and go to zero this time. You always have to start at the number that you left off from. So we go down, turn right, and then turn left. Okay, and then let's make it turn again. So this time, I'm going to wait a little bit before it turns. So let's wait for 30 ticks before it turns. Come from the off event to the delayed impulse. And then we're going to go from 0 to 180. Because we're going to turn all the way around. And let's make this take longer. So this is going to be a longer turn, a wider turn. So we'll take 150 ticks. You want to change the delayed impulse to turn it off to 150 ticks because you don't want to turn it off too early. All right, let's see what that looks like. It goes down, turns, and it makes a long turn to come back. All right, nice. All right, so now let's copy this. Come from this off event over here to another the other group let's set this to 15 and remember the last number that you left off at so this has to be 180 and from here we're going to turn to 270 because I want to make another 90 degree turn and this we're going to take 60 ticks to turn so it'll be kind of a less sharp of a turn. And I'll just go ahead and put this other one in. And so here we're going to go from here. And we'll delay for 55 ticks. And we'll go from 270 to 180. And that'll be another 60 tick turn. Okay, so now let's see if this works. So drive down, turn, turn, come back, turn, turn, come back, back where we started. Okay, so that's how you do it. You use everything just to power this variable. You can see if we watch the variable, you see how it changes up and down and just goes any direction. Whatever you want to do, you can use all of the animations. You know, in the curved data sources, you can use all the eases and all that stuff to change the numbers. And everything just changes that variable. And you could use this on, you know, whatever axis you want to. You can use it on whatever you need to, just to slow down or, or speed up turns or whatever. But it just depends on how long you make the turn and how long you make the delay as to how far it goes before it turns and how sharp the turn is. So, thanks for watching and have a good time.